Hello FPL managers, today we've got the transfer traps for game week 2. In today's video, we look over some of the most transferred in players coming into the next game week and identify 5 players which are considered transfer traps and should not be transferred into the squads. This could be due to a multitude of reasons, such as they had a one-off performance or are unlikely to score points in the future. If you guys do want to get the extra edge this FPL season, then click the top link in the description to get yourselves 65% off Fantasy Football Fix Premium and also get yourselves a free strategy guide. So just before we get into the video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to show support for the channel as we're going to hit 4k subs by Game 5 and also click that notification bell so you guys don't miss any future uploads. With that being said, let's get into the video. So first of all, starting off with the most transferred players for this game week, Paul Pogba is currently the most transferred player as he has already seen a price rise from 7.5 to 7.6. Fernandez is another one that has been transferred a lot as he has also seen a price rise, which is the same as for Charleston who has gone up by 0.1 as well. Lukaku is another popular transfer in despite not playing yet, Simakas at 4 million has seen a price rise to 4.1 as he looks to be good value at the back, Antonio has also seen a price rise from 7.5 to 7.6 as he had a great game week 1. Alonso has been another one that has been transferred after a big scoring game week 1. Benrahma at 6 million looks to be great value and is another top transfer. Salah is such a great option. Dennis proved to be great value for his 5 million price tag. Carvalhoen got himself a goal. Son also got himself a goal. Amati looked to be great value for 4 million. Pinnock got a nice score at 4.5. Danning converted a late penalty goal and is coming in at 8 million pounds. Sergi Karnas had a huge game at 1 for Brentford. Schmeichel got a clean sheet and Shalabar got himself a goal and a clean sheet. So amongst these top 18 transferred in players for Game Week 2, we have identified 5 options here which we think could be worth avoiding. The likes of Pogba, Alonso, Amati, Pinnock and Kanyos are on the transfer traps list as they are likely to knock out returns in the future as they did have a one-off week. So having a look at the first transfer trap on the list, it is Paul Pogba. Pogba is currently the most transferred in player for Game Week 2 with already over 420,000 managers moving him in. This has seen him reach a price rise to £7.6 million as he did originally start at 7.5. Pogba obviously had a huge week in game week 1 as he picked himself up 4 assists recording 16 FPL points. His ownership has already seen an increase of around 6% in the recent days and across his first match against Leeds he recorded 2 shots, 0 goals and 4 assists as we touched on. Pogba's underlying numbers were also very impressive for that game as he did have an XG of 0.27 and an XG of 0.68. One of his shots were on target and he also had 5 attempted at assists as well and for playing just 74 minutes this is a fairly good output. But for game week 2, Fix only predicts him to get 3.7 points and across the span of last season he did only record 3 assists which he was already beaten in just one game. Pogba was playing a more attacking role with the likes of Jadon Sancho and Martial out for Manchester United, but with them returning to this squad in the upcoming matches, it would be seeing Pogba drop to a more shallow position and of course we'll be getting less attacking. He did play as a defensive midfielder for the large proportion of last season and this is the position that I would expect him to drop back into. So for £7.5 million, I wouldn't be keen to buy a defensive midfielder as I would expect him to get less points in there with the other Manchester United teammates coming back into the team. And obviously this is a one-off performance for him as he didn't replicate these numbers last season. Here. If you are looking for around a 7.5 million Manchester United attacker, I think Mason Greenwood could be better value. Moving on to the second transfer trap, it is Marcos Alonso. Alonso is the 8th most transferred in player for this week, as he already has seen 169,000 managers move him in. The Chelsea defender coming in at 5.5 million had a huge week in game week 1, as he recorded a goal and a clean sheet to total for 15 FPL points. Across the span of the 90 minutes, he did record himself 3 shots, but did get 0 assists, but this is actually a fairly nice attacking output for a defender. So with just a 5.5% ownership, I can see why a couple of managers are tempted to bring him in, but I do think he's going to be getting less minutes now with Ben Shiro coming back into the team. Especially for the large proportion of last year, Alonso did play against the easier teams and Shaw did play against the top half sides, so with Chelsea's fixtures looking very difficult in the upcoming matches, I would expect Alonso to potentially get benched for 3-4 to four out of their next 5 matches. The only reason that Shaw wasn't really ready to start in game week 1 was due to his fitness, and I do think once Shaw comes back into the team, Alonso would definitely be second choice. Also, I'm not sure if Chelsea's defensive output will continue, as they do have the tricky fixtures of Arsenal, Liverpool, Villa, Tottenham and Manchester City as their next 5 opponents, which I would really only expect them to get 1 or 2 clean sheets in. So, despite having a very nice performance in game week 1, I don't think Chelsea defenders are going to be the best assets for the upcoming game weeks, and Marcus Alonso is probably unsure for upcoming starting minutes. And moving on to the third player on the list is Daniel Amati. Amati is coming in at 4 million pounds and had a nice game week 1 but he recorded a clean sheet for Leicester getting himself 6 points. 
Amati was already quite a high-end player, but his ownership has risen to 16.6%, as he was the 13th most transferred player for this game week. He has seen around 123,000 managers move him in, and in game week 1, he recorded 0 shots, 0 goals, and 0 assists. Obviously for Amati, you are paying for the clean sheets, not the attacking output, but I'm not too sure about his starting minutes for the upcoming matches. We did see Vestager get subbed on in Leicester's game week 1 match against Wolves, and I do think Vestager will be getting the nod over Amati in the upcoming matches. It looks like Leicester are going to be running a 4 defenders formation, and I think Amati will depart for the arrival of Vestergaard. He is one that's in the category of if you already have him then it's fine you can leave him, but if you don't have him I wouldn't think the time to bring him in would be now, as their next fixtures are also quite difficult, but they face West Ham away, Norwich and then Manchester City. Also, Fantasy Football Fix does predict him not to start as he only has a predicted game rate 2 points of 1, so I do think he's probably not going to be getting the minutes in the upcoming matches, and if you don't have him already then do not transfer him in. Moving on to the 4th player on the list, it is the Brentford defender Ethan Pinnock. Pinnock was one of the top scoring players for game week 1 as he did make himself onto the kings of the game week recording 11 points. This came about as he got himself 1 assist and 1 clean sheet in Brentford's very impressive home performance against Arsenal. Pinnock is coming in with a nice price of £4.5 million and has a very low 3% ownership. Despite this he has already seen 122,000 managers transfer him in which does feel a bit knee jerky to me. Across the span of the 90 minutes, Pinnock did record 1 assist but had an XG of 0.00 and an X save of just 0.04. Pinnock's assist was quite lucky in the fact that he won the aerial duel from a header, which did fall to his Brentford teammate who finished quite a nice goal for this season opener, so I don't think Pinnock is looking likely for many attacking returns in the future. Brentford do have some nice upcoming fixtures where they face Palace, Villa and Brighton as their next three, and he is predicted to get 3.3 points in game week 2. But if you are so sold in the Brentford defence, I would be looking elsewhere such as the likes of Rico Henry or Raya in goals, as I don't think Pinnock offers that much attacking potential despite getting himself an assist. And moving on to the fifth and final transfer trap, it is Pinnock's Brentford teammate in Sergi Canos. Sergi Canos had a very impressive game week one as he also got himself 11 points by recording a goal. Due to this, he has already seen just under 100,000 managers transfer him in. Over the course of the game, he had an XG of 0.16, which is fairly low, had an XA of 0.3, which is decent, recorded 3 shots, 2 shots on target, and 1 attempted assist. Fantasy Football Fix only predicts Kanyos to get 2.6 points in game week 2, as they face Crystal Palace away. Sergio Kanyos was playing fairly defensive for the whole game, as it looks like this season he will be playing in a right wing back role. Obviously, since he is a midfielder, this is not good value because he is defending but not receiving clean sheet points as he isn't a defender, and I do think over the span of the season, he will decrease in attacking returns because he is playing in the back half of the pitch. So, at 5.5 million pounds in the middle of the park, if you are looking for that Brentford attacker, though, I do think Mbwemo could be better value as he was playing in the striker position for Brentford in game week 1 and did have quite a few chances. Also, there are a couple of other good value options around that 5.5 to 6 million pound price tag that did perform well in game week 1, such as the likes of Ishmael Assar and Ben Rama, so I would be going for them instead of Sergi Kanyos. So that's all we've got for today for the transfer traps of game week 2. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, if you did give it a like and subscribe to show support for the channel as we're trying to hit 4k subs by game week 5. Also click that notification bell so you guys don't miss any future uploads and leave a comment what you guys thought of this video and what are your transfer plans for the upcoming game week. And with that being said, I'll see you guys in the next one.